I started with wildlife photography, and I was probably one of the few guys in the world, this is way back 20 years ago, uh, was putting all my pictures on Creative Commons, and it pissed off a lot of other photographers. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but my j journey started with loving nature, you know, loving the birds, the, the insects, the animals, and things like that. But once you love them and once you start seeing them disappearing, you can't help but, you know, I, I really felt like I had to do something about it. And that's where my journey of not to do anything, just to understand how the world of environment works. I was always save the tiger, save the elephant, save the bees, save the mushrooms or whatever, you know. But the more I spent time in the forest, around the forest, I realized that to save the environment, the number one top priority is social justice. I've learned that personally, and I'm a storyteller, and I'll, I want to share two of these stories with you, okay? And, and how I learned that social justice is everything. So one thing I learned very early on, I mean, I'm not a, a trained journalist, but I'm a storyteller. And in telling stories, one thing I've realized is that when you give large numbers, you read in the newspaper that, you know, Palestine, you know, 180 people died today, you know? But what moves people is personal journeys. So instead of saying 180 pe people died, I would rephrase that as saying a small girl, age nine, you know, staying alone with her grandmother, her name is Ria, she died along with 170 others. That moves people. Telling stories through individuals. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen Fred Rogers, he's a child show host. He had this quote in his pocket all the time. Frankly, there isn't anyone you can't learn to love once you heard this story. <laughs> so there are two stories I want to start with. One is a story about this girl. Um, about a decade ago, uh, in, I, I'm, I'm from Bangalore, so in the state of Karnataka, a place called Hassan, uh, you know, there's a lot of human elephant conflict. You know, there are a lot of elephants that were coming out of the forest and destroying houses and also um, people's lives. And the Karnataka High Court just gave a blank order saying that, you know, capture all these elephants. They were estimated to be 35, 40. And they just said, capture these elephants. It sounds very easy, just capture them and put them, put them somewhere. <laughs> but I knew that it's not going to be easy. And, and, and I'm all, elephants are my favorite animals because they're intelligent. They show emotions, and I really connect with them. So I thought I'll go document this, you know. So it was heartbreaking to see. Um, I, I made a film, a short film about it, which I'm not going to show. But um, on the first day I was there shooting these elephants, one man walked up to me and punched me on my face. My camera fell down and broke. I said, what happened? Why are you hitting me? <laughs> he said, uh, where the fuck were you when my daughter died? Sorry to use um, the effort, but he literally said in as much words. I said, what happened? I said, when my daughter got killed by an elephant, where, you, where are all you press guys? But when elephants are getting captured, all you guys come and make noise. It's we villagers that are suffering. I said, you know what? I want to hear your story. So he, I said, he said, OK, come, come home tomorrow morning. So he invited, I went to his house, had a nice masal dosa, and then <laughs> Uh, he showed me this. Her name is uh, Supriya. And um, she was, uh, it's, it's a very rural part of Karnataka. She was in class 10. You know, she was going, um, doing very well. One of the few, you know, in rural areas, they don't send the girl child to higher education. So she was doing really well. She and her friend were on their way to school on the final exams. And an elephant came and killed her. Nobody came. No forest department, no journalist. The girl was just lying there. He had to pick her herself, take her to hospital. But she was, it was too late. So I said, you know what? I have to tell this story to the world. Because my, my own friends in Bangalore and other places were saying, oh, no, we shouldn't capture the elephants. All that. And I was under that opinion. But first time I could see that people were suffering. And they were not getting the justice they deserved. So across India, a lot of people lose their lives. Um, not just lives, but livelihoods. 
you know. Um, it's easy for all of us, we fly here and all that, but these farmers take loans at really high interest, and all it takes is one elephant herd to come in one night, and your livelihood is fully gone. So this is the process of capturing the elephants. Now, what is right, what is wrong, we don't know, but to actually experience this, it's very traumatic, you know. Um, they catch these elephants, they, you know, it's like a prisoner in a ward, you know, being tortured. And these elephants are tied up and these, you know, they just don't know what to do in this human world. And um, they use these captive elephants to catch these wild ones. And I want to tell this interesting story because this elephant on the right was captured from the same place five years ago. And when this female was caught, he just stood by her for two days because they knew each other from before. And they kept in a jail like this for six months till, you, till they break them down. And finally, once they break them, you know, we go to these amusement parks and play with uh, these elephants. So I made a short video about it. Um, and uh, it went viral on WhatsApp and things like that. Uh, I really don't have power to go to the ministers and things, but some, thankfully this clip landed with the forest minister of Karnataka. And when there was the next gathering with elephants and farmers and scientists and all that, he just went on stage and he said, you know, I saw this video. I saw, I heard about this girl. You know, we're going to be human about it. We're not going to catch mass elephants. If there's only one elephant that's traveling, we'll only catch one at a time. No more mass catching of elephants in the state. So I was really relieved to have a positive impact just because of that visual medium and visual storytelling. <clears throat> so that's the parents of the girl. The other story I want to tell about, uh, talk about is uh, this rare primate called the lion-tailed macaque. It's only found in the Western Ghats. There's believed to be less than 3,000 left in the wild. Um, this story is about how it's not always working at judiciary, but there are a lot of decision-making people who are in the government, and, and sometimes convincing them through a story or a visual medium has much bigger impact than scientific reports. Okay. So there's a place called Walpara where, um, and there's this one particular patch of jungle where these are found, like large numbers of them. And it was, there was a two-lane highway and there was a proposal to make it into a four-lane highway. And I was working with a local NGO called NCF and we, they were struggling how to convince the Gaga people that, you know, we don't need that. <coughs> um, what, I mean, as scientists, I mean, I'm, I mean, these are all my friends. Anyway, so uh, these people have work, uh, worked for many years, created scientific reports like this, you know, and, and they were sending this to the highways department, you know, that these are endangered species, you have to save it. But it was just blank, they wouldn't return. So what I did was, let me, let me, let me have, have a go at it. So I spent a couple of um, months documenting this primate. So, and, and what I did this, uh, the photos I'm going to show you, I kind of did a photo exhibition of this in Coimbatore. <clears throat> so, to, show, uh, to make people understand how cool these primates are, you know, like this, they have the ability to, they have these canines to open um, jackfruits. Uh, they have territories like other animals, so if there's a fruiting tree, um, they will fight for those territories. But the thing is, they need forests like this, um, pre pristine rainforests. And they breed very slowly also. In the wild, usually the, the alpha male and the alpha female breed, and others don't breed. So the population um, goes up very slowly. And they become friendly over time. <laughs> you know, because of a road, uh, people throwing peanuts and things like that. The first time I got there to film, and uh, it's one of the end most endangered primates, and this just came and sat on my camera. Uh, they also steal, uh, they're good thieves. They go into people's kitchens and steal stuff and quite mischievous about it. So this is how the forest looks like, you know? But the min and, and these usually don't come to the ground. They always stay in the canopy. But once you build a road, you create this big barrier for these primates to move. So animals have to jump. Uh, the local NGO, for example, built these bridges and all that for these um, monkeys to cross, but still there are fatalities. 
sorry. <laughs> so like I said, they have to use the road to cross and, uh, and eventually they come in contact with uh, people. This particular uh, primate was there. I would, got hit by a bus when I was there. And uh, we went with the vets and they were doing post-mortem and they re realized that she was pregnant. Uh, they took out the fetus and put it in a jar. And this is how the fetus looks like. Except for the tail, it looks like a human being. Yeah? So we showed these pictures to the highway uh, chief engineer in Coimbatore. And he was shocked. He said, oh, I didn't know this is such a rare species, such a beautiful animal, and it's uh, so close to humans. And the thing is, with these visual, uh, visuals, we had data to back it up. The scientists who've been working there have been collecting information about how highways affect wildlife. Uh, so we spoke about why you need canopy connectivity and, and, and speed breakers. The chief engineer mo was moved so much, the first thing in the morning, that next morning at 9 o'clock, he passed an order saying that that stretch of forest, the road is not going to be widened. Not only that, he insisted that every 150 meters there has to be a speed breaker. So since then, uh, the road incidents, at least in that stretch of uh, forest, have reduced dramatically. So this is why I feel storytelling is sometimes probably the best way to get justice in this country. You know, you need to move the people, and sometimes visual storytelling can really be impactful than traditional means. I just wanted to leave you with that quote. Uh, he's a South African philosopher, and I truly believe that. You know, uh, people will only conserve what they love, and you need. And as an environmentalist, I would like to make people love with the wildlife, and, and they themselves will save it. Thank you very much.